Pantheism explains the size of the universe and the vast number of stars and galaxies. Many theistic texts were written at a time when people believed that the sky and the stars were nothing but a great dome only a few hundred miles over the Earth. Creation myths therefore write that the entire universe was made explicitly and exclusively for the benefit of man. Every point of light was believed to exist to illuminate man, and it followed that everything that existed was within a shot of humanity. Now we know better. There are stars, entire galaxies, so vastly distant that we will never have any sense of what they contain, not in a thousand years, not in a million years. We have, just within the past few years turned our most powerful telescope on a single dot in the night sky, a single point that appears from our vantage point to be an empty spot in a surrounding sea of darkness, far from familiar stars. And in that dot, magnified millions of times over, we saw a whole new world of galaxies flush with stars, galaxies beyond galaxies, some mere pinpricks in the distance behind others, which could at least be made out as the clouds of burning orbs that they were. We have not reached the limit of our power of magnification. But the most distance of these bodies teaches us that we will never have time to find what hides behind every dot of darkness in the heavens, and yet there is without doubt a similar new world at the farthest end of each of them. This leads to a question that shatters the ancient myths of the special purpose of the universe being in service of man. For if that was so, why then would any intelligent creator spend the extra effort required to make galaxies of stars and planets that we will never visit or even see from afar? Pantheism provides an answer where theistic faiths fail because of their belief that mankind is bound to this planet. Since Pantheism puts forth the idea that examination of the universe through a series of logical steps suggests that the deus became the universe in order to share in the experience of life therein, then the universe must be designed by its own natural law to facilitate such an experience. It must be of a structure that will lead to a biogenesis and evolution by natural selection leading to the development of self-reflective intelligent life, and to life with a level of awareness vastly superior to our own, one to which we have simply not yet evolved. Supposing that the deus blew itself up, in the Big Bang that started it all, so is thereafter not around, to guide life into existence, and must count on that happening on its own according to the laws of physics written into the universe at the creation. Three distinct driving factors must underscore the scope of such creation. First, the deus sought to create a universe that would maximize the instances of intelligent life developing without need of further intervention. The formula used would have that as its primary consideration, irregardless of the size of the universe that might be generated. And if, as logic suggests, the deus used the optimum formula of physical constants, gravity, subatomic mass, strength of the electromagnetic and nuclear forces, the size of the universe would just be a side effect of the formula, and one of no great concern. Second, to create a universe that would maximize the instances of intelligent life developing, the bigger the universe, the more places in which this might occur. Life must thus exist in other solar systems, perhaps in this galaxy, perhaps in others, but life equally likely to travel to other stars. Third, to gain the maximum benefit of sharing in this experience, the deus would wish for life to blossom and spread throughout throughout a big universe full of wonder and beauty giving its inhabitants many opportunities to discover and feel out at the side of things within, feelings which the deus shares with us. Perhaps fewer things will inspire more wonder than the meeting of two civilizations, each alien to the other, hopefully in a spirit of peace. Though this may not happen in our lifetimes, of all the faiths on earth, it is pandeism that teaches that the destiny of mankind is to be shaped among the stars.